It's not five o'clock, and they don't care. Welcome to Wine to Five. Entertainment, education, and everyday drinking for everyday people. Your hosts are Valerie Caruso and Stephanie Davis, two wine educators who don't need a clock to know when to pour that next glass. It's time for your dose of Wine 25, and we've teed up a great interview for you. Yes, everybody joining us today is Maurizio Brogi. Did I get that right? Perfect. Okay. Uh, Maurizio Brogi, and we'll talk a little bit more about who he is and what he does shortly. But first, we're going to talk about what's in his glass, because he's having a glass of wine with us this afternoon. So, Maurizio, what are you drinking this afternoon? Hi, everybody, and thank you for having me. Uh, today I'm drinking a red wine from Northern Piemonte. It's a red wine uh, based on Nebbiolo. It's a 2011 uh, Gamme di OCG, which is one of the main appellations of uh, uh, Northern Piemonte, together with Gattinara di OCG. And I think I love this wine. I love the producer. The producer is uh, uh, Vigneti Valle Roncati. It's a small producer, but it's, very, uh, it's a very benchmark uh, Nebbiolo from Northern Piemonte. Very nice. What year is it? 2011. Okay. Maybe later you could send us a picture and we'll put it in the blog if you wouldn't mind. Sure. Yeah, that'd be sure. great. Yeah. What are you drinking, Steph? Our visual, our, our visual people, they need to see all of the, these pictures of wine. <laughs> yeah. Drool over them. <laughs> well, I'm, yeah, I'm drinking pink. So I'm drinking what's open, nothing fancy, but for, you know, people who like to drink rosé all year round, this one's for you. This one is a 2015 Moment de Plaisir, and that's a Pay Doc IGP, and it's 60% Syrah and 40% Grenache, and I did buy a Magnum. Yeah, you <laughs> <Wow>. did. <laughs> yeah, I did. This is really a good value wine, and so, uh, it, you know, you feel good when you have a few people over to... Uh, open a magnum of of rosé that makes it feel like a party even when it's not steph anytime we get to drink with you is a party that's just the way it is so <laughs> yeah yeah that's so true what are you drinking i i have italian as well i'm in piemonte i have the gd vira barbara d'alba superiore 2014 the superiore means that you're going to have a little higher alcohol than you would with the regular uh, doc Barbera d'Alba. So I believe it's a minimum of 12.5 minimum alcohol by volume. And the wine also, because it's superiore, means it's going to age a little bit longer, a year at least with four months in wood. But Viro actually uses Slavonian oak and ages this wine for almost two years. So this is one of those big full bodied styles of Barbera. It is absolutely loaded with dark fruit, spice, and even black tea. It's about a $28 bottle. And I am just I am loving it. So I'm going to try not to drink it all before we finish this interview. So we might hear some lip smacking. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you're probably going to hear some lip smacking and, and dribbling throughout the show. But we're, we'll try to maintain our manners <laughs> because we have a guest. And yes. uh, so we'll we're on our best behavior. Yeah, we're going to try. We're a little bit about our guest. So Maurizio Brocci, he's a DWS. That means he's got his diploma in wine and spirits. He's a French wine scholar. And he's also the Wine Scholar Guild's Education Director for Italy. Italy. So, of course, we got Italian wine open. And Maurizio has quite a few super accomplishments and certifications. And what sets him apart is his keen attention to detail, his hunger for perfection, and his passion for all that is Italy. Maurizio Borgi has several years of experience in the wine industry, and since 2009, he's worked as a sommelier in Italy and as a wine consultant for wine shops, restaurants, and various consortia of Lombardia. In 2011, he left Italy and moved to China, where he worked as a wine ambassador for a wine distributor based in Hong Kong until 2014. He earned the Wine and Spirits Education Trust advanced and intermediate levels, both with distinction in 2013. And then he was awarded the Decanter Scholarship for top advanced level graduate and the WSET Book Prize for the top score in the intermediate level. He also earned the Diploma in Wine and Spirits with Merit from the WSET in 2015 as well. And of course, his credentials include the French Wine Scholar with Highest Honors, Certified Specialist of Wine from Society of Wine Educators, which is where I met him, and the yeah. Certified Sommelier from the Court of Masters. And we'll, we'll go ahead and list all his accomplishments in the blog. But welcome, Maurizio. Wow, you are a busy guy. 
thank you. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> Oh, uh-huh. my gosh. Well, well, let's start with your life and work in Hong Kong's wine industry. What made you move there? Tell us a little bit about that before we move on to your current uh, busy life. Well, let's say that um, I used to go to Asia um, periodically for the uh, Italia Chamber of Commerce to organize uh, um, wine seminars and uh, um, um, wine events for the uh, many northern Italian wines. So when I, when I was there um, in Hong Kong, I met this uh, local wine distributor who was, was look, they were looking for um, specifically for somebody, um, uh, a foreign guy from from Italy or for, uh, from France with wine knowledge because they, they needed um, um, wine ambassador for to promote and educate about the, their wine. And uh, so they, they made me this offer, which was at that time was crazy because, uh, I mean, I had no intention to uh, to move from from Italy to uh, to China or Hong Kong, and um, but I really enjoyed all the previous experience that I had um, in in China and Hong Kong uh, for the um, organizing the seminars and the um, the wine tastings. Um, so I decided to to give it a try. So I basically left everything um, from Italy and I, and I moved to um, to Hong Kong. Wow. And this, and this was in 2011, yeah. Okay. And then you did the diploma while you were in Hong Kong. Is that correct? Well, let's say that uh, Hong Kong for me is very important, not only because I uh, started my international career there, but also because in Hong Kong I basically found out what I didn't know before. Because uh, up until then, my, my wine knowledge was basically um, all I learned the, during my classes with the Italian Sommelier Association, which was basically uh, mainly Italian wines. Mm-hmm. And when I, when I moved to Hong Kong, I found out that about the WSCT, I found out about the Wine Scholar Gear, which at that time was the French Wine Society. I found out about the uh, Courto Master Sommelier. And when I was in Hong Kong, I went through all this wine certification, uh, which gave me a lot of um, new resources to um, uh, to work in the wine and the wine trade and wine business. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What did you love the most about Hong Kong? Hong Kong, honestly, everything. I love, I love the city. I love the people. I love the um, uh, the food. And it, Hong Kong is, uh, of course, Hong Kong is not China. Uh, it's very different, and you don't have the um, um, language barrier that you you find in in, uh, in China, where not um, a lot of people speak English, especially outside the major cities. Um, and in Hong Kong, everybody is really uh, is really nice. I, I really love. Uh, be there. I, I love the the wine scene there. There is a lot of opportunities uh, for uh, in terms of work, but also um, in terms of learning wines. So uh, I think Hong Kong was, for me was one of the greatest things that happened to me. That's so cool. Yeah, I've been to Hong Kong too, and I just, it's it's not like China at all. I mean, you really are in like New York City or something. It's so yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah something yeah. unique. Yeah, something unique. Well, and so right now you're living kind of a double life, right? So you spend, what, half the year in Italy and half the year in the U.S.? Pretty much, yes. Let's say that I live a little bit more in uh, uh, Las Vegas, uh, where I moved uh, uh, in the middle of 2014. But I spend quite a lot of time uh, in Italy um, as well. I'm often back uh, in Milano, which is where I uh, grew up and where I lived for most of my life and where my family lives. So let's say that every... Three to four months, I'm going back to Milan for sometimes for just a few weeks, sometimes for a couple of months. Depends for, from on what I have to do. How's the Vegas scene? Uh, I like Vegas. Honestly, I uh, I was surprised when I moved here because it's, uh, you know, when you think about Vegas, you think about the strip and the casinos and all the confusion and the tourists. But outside that, I mean, there is also Las Vegas where people have to uh, have to live. And it's kind of quite uh, super clean well organized so i actually love the place where i'm uh, i am now, right now i love this part of the city because it's completely let's say even if we are close to the strip we are in a sense far away because we don't see any of the craziness that uh, there is on uh, on the strip every uh, every day and in terms of um, wines i mean there are, there are a lot of uh, choices, uh, a lot of restaurants, so you can find pretty much every every one you're looking for. So are you up in Summerlin or down in Green Valley? Where are you? 
Summerlin. Summerlin's amazing. Yeah. I lived in Vegas about 20 years ago, and they were just building a lot of Summerlin. Do you work up there too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work from uh, my office in Summerlin too. Nice. That's a very, very beautiful area. And it's often about 10 degrees cooler than it is in the valley. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So for anyone that's never heard of the Italian wine scholar, for those of you listening, if you haven't figured out, Maurizio's Italian. (laughs) (laughs) And he wrote the Italian Wine Scholar Program. So we would love it if you would tell us a little bit about the wine, Italian Wine Scholar Program and, you know, how it got started and what it is. What, what do we need to know about this program? Sure. The, the Italian Wine Scholar is a, a study and certification program that um, has been created by the Wine Scholar Guild um, as an advanced and comprehensive specialization program on the wines of Italy. The, the Italian Wine Scholar was designed f- uh, to provide students of wine with all the tools necessary to um, to master the wines of Italy at a professional level. And um, it is very useful not only for uh, those who w- want to understand the complexity of the Italian uh, of the uh, wines of Italy, but also it's a great resource for those students uh, who are going through the uh, all the advanced um, wine study programs, such as the WCT diploma, the Quarter Master Sommelier, Advanced Sommelier, or the Certified Wine Educator uh, from the um, Society of Wine Educator. There is no prerequisite to enroll in the program, but usually we recommend the students uh, to at least have a, a minimum of one certification like the WCT Level 2 or the Certified Specialist of Wine from the Society of Wine Educator or the uh, Introductory Sommelier Certificate from the Quarter Master Sommelier. In a few words, the, the program is divided in two separate units uh, with two, two separate uh, manuals. Uh, unit one is the, the wine of northern Italy, and unit two is the wine of uh, central and southern Italy. So there are two separate uh, manuals, there are two, two separate exams in order to earn the uh, Italian Wine Scholar credential. You need a composite score uh, between the two units uh, of, at least, of at least 75%. And... Uh, uh, let's say that the the program has been uh, launched in 2016, and uh, right now is available in distant learning format, but also in classroom format in many of the uh, wine schools that offer our the uh, wine scholar guild uh, um, program. We are um, we are very happy about uh, the the Italian wine scholar program because uh, last year we received the uh, official endorsement of the Italian Trade Agency, which is also known as Italian Trade Commission, based in New York. It, it is an Italian government agency for the promotion of the Made in Italy. And for, for us, this um, was an achieve, was this achievement was important because uh, we for us was a very challenging and long project which uh, we spent over two years de- developing the program so for us it was a real especially particularly for me a real satisfaction to obtain an endorsement like the um, italian trade agency um, endorsement congratulations yeah Thank i you. can tell you're very very proud and you should be because i watched you guys go through the launch of the unit one and unit two came out quite a bit later and is yes. there so should you do unit one first then unit two or does it matter uh, no you can do unit two if you want before unit one but you usually recommend you start with your unit one and then you proceed on unit two right of course, you know, go in numerical order, but Val has to do everything backwards because that's how she rolls. But <laughs> <laughs> is it go at your own pace then, right? Yes. I mean, uh, the um, when we developed the program, we the first thing that we have to consider was that there is a really a huge amount of information. I mean, uh, uh, you have more than 300 native, gra- native, native grapes, more than 400 wine appellation. So this amount of information can be really overwhelming. So for this reason, we... We decided to uh, basically divide the program into two units, the, the one of Northern Italy and the second unit, the Central and Southern Italy, because in this way, the two units are more manageable for the students. They can learn better. They can also have uh, more chances to pass the, uh, the exam. And uh, each unit is divided in chapter. 
uh, based on each on the region. Uh, so there is a, uh, the Italian wine scholar uh, follows a regional approach. Uh, for every single region, we focus on the grapes and the terroir that makes each region in Appalachia unique. And so there is great emphasis in uh, uh, to to the grapes and to the DOC and DOCG, and also on the uh, regulation, the flavor profiles. The other important thing that we consider when we build the we created the Italian wine scholar is that we wanted to put every region into historical, geographic, and cultural context because we think that only by doing this um, you can really understand and master the wines of Italy. Uh, you need a, a background when you, you learn about Italy because each region is so different from all the others that um, once you've been, you've, you've been given background in terms of culture, history and, uh, and tradition, you understand why there are so many grapes, so many wine styles, so many wine appellations. And um, I mean, it can be a daunting task for sure, but at the same time, extremely rewarding for the students. Definitely. I think it's important also to understand that, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, Italian food. I'm like, well, Italian food from where? Because, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, everything is, the wine is different in every region. Like all 20, it's 21 regions make wine. It's 21, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it 21? Yeah, it's, uh... Okay, the, uh, formally it's 20 administrative regions, but sometimes I like to say there are 21 because Trentino Alto Adige is uh, one administrative region, but if you if you go there, you understand that right. those are two different regions, even if the, the, the law say that there is Trentino Alto Adige is one administrative region, but they're really different, especially Alto Adige. They have an overlapping area, yeah. but yeah, when I did the uh, certification summit with Ms. Jane, I know I divided them up into separate reasons. So that's why I say 21 too. But, you know, never it, ch it changes so fast. But I think if people understand the food is different up there, the language is even different up there and parts of it, they speak yeah. German. And, and then yeah. down south, the food is different and the wine is different. The terroir is different. So you can't just say Italian food. And that drives me crazy. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know what? Sometimes people are not aware of this aspect of Italy because they think that Italy is an old world country, which is true. But in fact, Italy, as a unified country is uh, younger than the United States right. of America because Italy was unified as a single country only in 1861. So in the century prior to the Italian unification, uh, the country was divided into a large number of small kingdoms and city-states. And so Italy, uh, basically all these political entities shaped dif in, a, in a different way the history, the people, the culture, and so also the grapes and the wines and the wine style of, the, of these territories. That's why each of these uh, 20 regions are uh, different. They grow their own grapes. They, they produce, they have their own uh, wine style, their, their own wine appellation. And uh, when you understand that, you understand why there is so much complexity in the entire wine. I think it's absolutely fascinating. And I'm not just saying that just because my people are from Abruzzo. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and, it, and thank you for putting this together because I think that the wine world out there really needed a program that was dedicated to teaching people all about Italian wine and also, you know, making it manageable to learn about it. Yeah. One of our main tasks wasn't only to to offer something that was comprehensive, so it was updated and uh, contained all the information, but we, want, we wanted also to uh, provide something that was easy to understand, easy to, to, to learn, because we know that it's not... It's not easy to manage all the all the wines of Italy, for sure. So how do the trips factor in? You guys are doing immersion trips as well to go with this program. So how do, how do those kind of split out? Uh, it's been great. We started last year with uh, the first two trips in um, uh, Piemonte and in uh, Tuscany. Mm -hmm. And they were great. We had uh, two great uh, trip leaders, let's say, uh, that were conducting the, the trips. It was um, Karin O'Keefe for Piemonte, which mm -hmm. is the author of uh, Barolo and Barbaresco, uh, the king and queen of uh, Italian wine, one of, one of the, to me, one of the best wine about Barolo and Barbaresco. And for Tuscany, we have uh, Jane Hand, MW, which is also, she knows very well uh, Tuscany, she knows very well uh, Italy, she's a MW. So two great uh, personality to uh, conduct the, these wine trips and the students were uh, really, I think they enjoyed a lot. You can imagine how students were happy when they, they went to Piemonte, they went to visit Barbaresco, they went to visit Gaia, and uh, Angelo Gaia was there to um, let them visit the, the, uh, the winery, and they had kind of a seminar 
led by Angelo Gaia. So everybody was super happy about that. Well, Maurizio, when you're not working, what are you doing that you love to do outside of the food and wine culture? Well, let's say that I like uh, cycling. I like uh, Guarani, especially here in um, in Vegas, because I have the possibility to do it in basically in the desert, which is something that I find unique. And uh, but I I tend to spend most of my uh, free time with my family, with my wife and my uh, daughter, which she's a uh, three years old and she's very fun to be around so I try to spend as much time as possible with them are you teaching her Italian as well yeah we 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 speak both languages um, my wife she's American she's from from here from Las Vegas she speaks uh, English to, to her and I speak Italian she she's she's learning both right now she's speaking a little bit of both I think that's how it should be that's awesome yeah 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 Hey, could you, uh, I want to back up and, and last year you were, I, I want to use the term headmaster. I don't know if that's correct for the crew artisan college. Yeah, it's, cor- it's correct. Yeah. Are you going to be doing that this year? Uh, we don't know yet because, uh, you know, the, the um, crew artisan college is, uh, this series of educational seminar, um, that take, take place, uh, once a year in three or four of the, the major cities in the U.S. Every year is uh, kind of different. So 2017 for us was the first time we partnership we we, we partner with the um, the Curtisan College and um, we I think that the, the 2017 edition with the uh, with the wine school was was great that the, the all the three cities all the three dates were uh, sold out and everybody enjoyed. Uh, the the seminar and i think we we for sure we hope to do it again we don't know yet because uh, as i was saying uh, sometimes the the um, every year the, the the program can slightly change but we definitely are in, interested to to cooperate with them again for uh, for next year okay yeah that that i'm kind of keeping my eye on it because you do that in in coordination with is it banfi right banfi yeah and Vinitaly as well right yes the the, the crew artisan college is based on the on the crew artisan wines portfolio of Banffy, all the, the wine that wines the Banffy import into US. And um, among these wines, there are uh, several prominent Italian wineries from some of the most important Italian appellations. So the the seminar were about only Italian wines. That's why they partnered with us because they we provided the um, educational content for uh, the seminar. We created this uh, nice booklet uh, with extra uh, of material from the Italian Wine Scholar manuals that we we gave to the participants. And um, I think it was a really, I mean, for me, it was a great experience. Uh, we, everybody really enjoyed the, the, the seminar. When do you think you'll know if how this is going to kind of play out this year? Probably by the end of the of this year. Okay. Yeah, how do people find out about it? Do they just need to subscribe like to a email list or how would they find out? Yeah, for sure. We're, the... we're going to uh, form our um, members, but also who is not member can uh, can see um, the announcement on our website um, with the dates and everything. And um, there is a specific website, which is the Courtesan uh, College um, website, where you can see all the dates, all the um, syllabus, all the information uh, for uh, the the past edition and the next editions. Okay, we'll we'll try and dig that up for everybody. So if you yeah. are interested, because I know we have people who are studying who, and you know, you guys had scholarships and things like that. So I'm sure our listeners would like to know more about that when the information comes out. I think it's very educational, really, because uh, I, for me, it was the first time I didn't know about the Curtisan College before. But the 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 thing is that um, each seminar, the, there are um, a group of winemakers that travels in uh, uh, all the three cities. So it's in each seminar, I was the headmaster. I was basically introducing each topic, and then as every um, a winemaker or a group of winemakers uh, describe all the topic in details. And it's very um, educational. You get to taste wine that are really amazing. And uh, it's a full day, I mean, from 9 a.m. to uh, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, something like that. And uh, it's really, uh, it's really great. Oh, man. Well, Maurizio, this is that point in our uh, podcast that we always ask our guests to tell us an embarrassing wine story. Do you have a good story to tell? Okay, let me, when I think about them, 
embarrassing wine story. <laughs> I have one. I have one, but it's not. Um, this was before my wine career started, and I was uh, young. I think I was like uh, 14 or 15 years old, of course, back in Italy. And my, my father used to buy wine in uh, Demi John from, um, um, we live in uh, Milan, so we used to we used to buy wine from Oltre Popavese, which is a um, well-known region for bulk wines. So we went, with my father, went to buy uh, Demi John's of wine, and then we um, um, brought back the, 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 the wine home, and we, we used to uh, bottle the wine ourselves, so we transfer the wine uh, from the Demijohn into the, the bottle. We, we put the cork into the to the bottle. It was kind of fun. And um, my father and myself and my brother. And one of this evening, I was unfortunately um, joking around with one of these Demijohn, which is they're huge. I mean, it's um, in Italian, we call it Damigiana. It's uh, 45 liters, which is approximately uh, 14 gallon of wine. And uh, I, unfortunately, it was joking around, I was playing with uh, this Demijohn, which was on a stool, and unfortunately the, the Damijana, the Demijohn, uh, fell on the ground. Um, we were in the cellar in the basement of, of my home, and of course the, the Demijohn uh, broke into a thousand pieces, and we had uh, 54 liters, 14 gallons of wine all over the floor, and uh, <laughs> I was so embarrassed. No. I mean, my, my father was so mad at me, and and uh, the, I think that the house uh, smelled like wine for um, weeks, probably. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, right, right now we laugh about it when we, we, because we still talk about that that night. We laugh, but at that time, I remember my father wasn't laughing at all. Was, <laughs> <laughs> I bet. 54 liters of wine. I remember it was, um, it was Barbera, Barbera from Oltrepo, Pavese. I will not forget this. Well, it's oh, kind of cool no. that I've got Barbera in my glass right now. So how weird is <laughs> yes. that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot well no we haven't had that kind of a story yet no so thank you for sharing no oh, you're welcome no that's a great story and if our listeners would like to get a hold of you Maurizio what is the best way to do it do you have the Facebook the Twitter the emails the websites go ahead and lay it all on us I have um, of course I have my um, wine scholar email address which is mbroggi at italianwinescholar.com or you can contact me on Twitter which is at Maurizio underscore Broggi or on LinkedIn or Facebook with my main you'll you'll find me easily. Okay. And great. All right, we will link all that up for you guys in the show notes. So if you want more information about uh, the Wine Scholar Guild or how to get the Barbera smell out of your house uh, <laughs> decades later, <laughs> you can reach out or just give them a shout out on Twitter. And I think that is it. So a big thank you, Marito, for being us, being with, you, being us, you, being with us here today over Skype on a Tuesday evening. You, you're welcome. And you you're are welcome. Thank you. Grazie tanto. And yes. you, you are offering also the listeners for the next week. So as of this airing, which would be 30 November through the 6th of December, a 15% discount on membership, correct? Correct. Yeah. On uh, mem not only membership, but on manuals and all educational programs. So Italian wine scholar, French wine scholar, and even the um, French wine scholar master level programs. That is awesome. And that is a huge chunk of change. So thank you so much for doing that. You're welcome. The uh, coupon code is W25WINE. You just go to the Wine Scholar Guild website and we'll link that up for you guys as well. And I know some of you are, are taking advantage of those things, which is really nice. We also want to give a shout out to our patrons who support the show on the Crown Funding platform that we call Patreon. Our Tenacious Tasters, Jeff E. from the We Like Drinking podcast, Lynn from Savor the Harvest, Sebastian from Sassy Italy Tours, Jen in Maryland and the World, Dave and Lisa in Illinois. And it's not five o'clock and we don't care, listeners. Meg, Clay, John, Andrew, Aswani, Chantel, Mary Lou, Kathy, Chris and Janet, Diane, Steve, Renee, Kathy, and Ashley, and our Tastemaker listeners, David, Carol, and Karen, and our Wine Tastic listener, Laura. Thank you guys so much. If you don't know what we're talking about, you can go to patreon.com forward slash wine25podcast. 
see what we're talking about, and get entered into our monthly drawing, and you will receive exclusive content as patrons. You will get early releases, and you also get some swag. Good swag. And that is the end of my glass of wine, and that is the end <laughs> of our show. We are here for you every single week between episodes. You can find us in the social spaces at wine to 5 and we encourage you to join our private Facebook group called the wine to 5 community. I'm Val. You can find me on Twitter at WineGal Unboxed and as Vino with Val on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. Steph, she is online as the wine heroine. And of course, you got Maurizio's information earlier at Maurizio underscore Brogi, B-R-O-G-G-I on Twitter. And we will also link up his email and you can find him on LinkedIn as well. But that is all we have for this week. And Maurizio, is there anything you want to say to our listeners before we uh, wrap it up? Uh, no, thank you again for the um, opportunity. It was really fun. And uh, to your listening, drink more Italian wine. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, thank you cheers so to much. That. Cheers. Salute. 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 Thank you for listening to the Wine to Five podcast. Be sure to check us out at Facebook slash Wine TWO 5. And tune in next week for more fun and useful SIP tips.